Today, I wanna to talk about the different kinds of sockets that you can run into when you're doing network programming. Now, if you've done any network programming at all, you've probably run into sockets, I, I probably. And I've done some network programming videos in the past. I'll link to them down in the description if you miss them, but they use sockets. And I'm thinking about making some additional socket videos in the future, and those are works in progress, but today I just wanted to take a second to make a quick video to talk about the different types of sockets you may run into, because there are two main types you're gonna see. Now, before we get too deep in there, just a quick overview, what is a socket? Just in case those have missed it, it's, well, it's, it, is it a data structure? Not really, it's more of an abstraction. It's an interface that the operating system gives you that allows you to perform network communications in a somewhat standard way. And it works a lot like a file. Basically, I say, hey, I want a new socket, and it's gonna give me a socket descriptor, which is going to be an integer that represents that socket. So it's gonna feel a lot like files, only that number rather than representing a file, that number is going to represent a network endpoint. And that's an endpoint that I could use to either send data to someone, either it could be on the same machine or it could be on the other side of the world, or to receive data from some other process. And if you haven't seen sockets before, you really should look into them because like I said, they are probably the closest thing we have to a standard network interface when we are working in C. And of course you see sockets in other languages as well. Okay, so that's what a socket is. Now for what we're getting at today, which is the two different kinds of socket. Because you are gonna run into two different kinds of sockets. The first is the stream socket and the second is the datagram socket. And I'm sure some of you back there are going, well, what about Unix domain sockets or raw sockets? And yeah, let me know if you wanna see videos about those. That's not what I'm talking about about today. Today I'm just talking about the types of sockets and the interfaces that they provide. Now in my previous network programming videos where we talked about sockets, we were using stream sockets. That's the first type. And a stream socket is going to make communication, it's going to make your communication connection look like a stream, like a stream of data, a stream of bytes. You can either put data into the stream or you can pull data out of the stream. And when I try to pull data out of the stream, the bytes are going to be in the same order that they went in. Now, keep in mind that if I send a big block of data across the network, that data is going to get broken up arbitrarily into packets, the you know small chunks that are gonna be sent across the network. But if we're working with stream sockets, we don't see that chunking up of the data. We don't see any of that. It just looks like data went in, data comes out, we get this nice continuous stream of data. Now you're also going to hear people refer to stream sockets as reliable sockets. And that may not mean exactly what you think it means. These sockets, these connections that we set up between a client and a server can still be broken. They can still get disconnected. Like if the Wi-Fi goes down or someone unplugs a network cable or things just get too congested and we can't get packets through. What reliable means in this case is that let's say under the hood, we break up this big chunk of data into individual packets. And let's say that some of those packets get lost or maybe two of them get received in a different order you know one a was sent before b but b is actually re received first and then a is received later well with reliable stream sockets basically uh, a lost packet is going to be resent it's going to try to resend it and any packets that get it out of order will be put back in the right order before they get delivered to your application and all of this stuff is being handled for you magically by the transport layer protocol usually tcp that is taking care of all of this messy stuff down under the hood. With stream sockets, you don't see any of that. And that's pretty nice. Now, why would we ever want anything else? Well, sometimes we don't want all that resending and congestion control and reordering of packets. We don't want that for one reason or another. Maybe I'm writing a program where I don't care about the ordering or I don't care if a little piece of data gets lost because all of that reliability stuff that TCP does for you, that comes at a cost. And so if you don't need it or you don't want it, some applications just choose to not use all these features. For example, let's say that I have a program that's gonna send audio and video data across. Maybe I'm, I'm writing something like Zoom, some kind of video chat application is sending audio and it's sending video. Now, what happens if one of my audio or video packets gets lost on the way? Well, if I'm using a stream socket, TCP is going to try to resend that packet. And depending on how fast or slow my network is, that might actually add some lag because it's like it makes everything wait until it can get through this next piece of data that it lost. And if what I care about is a really great experience for the user on the other end, this really could be the wrong move. Instead, what I might wanna do is just say, hey, you didn't get that little chunk of data, that's fine. I'm just gonna keep sending the more recent data. And yeah, so one frame got a little messed up. Not a big deal, that's 1 30th of a second or 1 24th of a second, depending on the frame rate of your video. One little garbled frame, that's hardly 
really noticeable where if we take the time to resend a whole packet and slow everything down, you might find yourself with a very noticeable, very annoying glitch in your audio and video. And of course, we can't do that with stream sockets, but we can do that with datagram sockets. Now with datagram sockets, we are sending individual packets or datagrams if you want to sound pretentious, and we don't get any of that reliability stuff. No reordering, no retransmissions, and no congestion control. So I'm sending these packets or datagrams and those packets could get lost on the way, maybe they get received out of order. The network is still going to make a best effort attempt to get my data through, but if packets get lost, they get lost. Life's tough. Also recall that I mentioned that there is no congestion control. And so what that also means is that there it's it's never going to it's not going to throttle back any of my packets if I'm sending too many or there's too many people talking on the network, it's going to leave that entirely up to me. And so I can send as much data as fast as I want. Now, of course, that can have problems. If a bunch of us are just trying to send too much data, we can clog up the network and cause all sorts of problems. So when we are using our datagram sockets, it's best to be on our best behavior and you know make sensible decisions so we don't ruin the party for everyone and you know also for our application. But if we play nice, I can sometimes actually get more data through the network than I could if I'm using TZ and stream sockets. And while datagram sockets aren't usually the ones you start with, I think they're really cool. And I have some upcoming videos that I am planning to do on datagram sockets and UDP. That's the protocol that they use, but they're not quite ready. So today I just thought I'd do this quick overview, help explain that there are two different types. Hopefully it's helpful to some of you. Hopefully you uh, learned something new today and I'll see you soon.